Did I grow up an environmentalist? Yeah, I, I grew up an environmentalist. I was literally the kid running around, switching off the lights the moment you left the room and sometimes before you left the room. Gotta save energy, guys, gotta save energy. Hi, I'm Joe, Credit Union Geek. I wanted to discuss a recent report put out by Ceres and Filene on climate change and its impacts on credit unions and other financial institutions. I really wanted to first thank them for this report. As somebody with an environmental background, I can speak to the quality of this report. It's fantastic. They touch on a ton of relevant topics and they go into them in a useful but reachable and understandable manner. So it's a fabulous report. You definitely want to make a point to go through it when you have the time, though I do understand it's a little bit long. But climate change is a big issue and you know, you're a financial institution and your credit union and community, they're also a big deal. I got immersed in it through the Florida Keys. We would go on eco tours and one tour, I remember we were riding around in this little boat through the flats and mangroves and the tour guide just kind of reaches over the side of the boat. He grabs out this giant shell that was in the water. Big old, big old shiny shell. And all of a sudden, like, out of it comes a bunch of muck. And all of a sudden, big old claws and everything start reaching out. The giant hermit crab that was just there. And it was like, oh my gosh, this is cool stuff. I, I got to get into this. And so between becoming a certified diver, uh, actually teaching other people how to dive through dive master training and working at a dive shop, uh, stay active outdoors through hiking and running and bicycling. Then I went on to the University of Miami and got a degree in marine affairs and policy, and then went on to get my master's in that same field at the Rosensteel School of the University of Miami. And it really was always focused about connecting the science of environment with the people that live in it and the policies that decide it and how all of those work together and how to make the best impact for everybody from that. My graduate thesis was actually this company. Yeah, I started Green Profit Solutions as a project of that. So it was originally focused directly as an environmental consulting and advising and strategy company, which we morphed over time into working with credit unions because we understood that they have a community mission and the people, planet, profit aspect of the triple bottom line. Well, credit unions definitely get a piece of that because they understand how important it is to have people that are financially empowered. So credit unions are probably wondering, and if you looked at this report, you're probably understanding a little bit better, why it should be involved in the environmental side at all. I mean, you do banking, you do money, you help people buy a car or buy a house or fix things up or whatever it may be and save for their retirement. Well, you have environmental strategies that are very individualized and personalized and local. Things like planting trees, and reducing energy use. Those are all great. However, we got to expand on that. We want to help you reduce costs to provide more to your members. And that can come through some of these strategies. Besides, it's in your mission. Serving your community includes environment. And I heard one person say, make a great line on it, and I wish I had the citation for you, but it's that climate change is a social issue with environmental consequences. And if we think of it that way, we can understand how the community is essential in building up support and mitigation to ensure that people are most empowered through things that are changing. Okay, so why is climate change a social issue? 
It's a great question. It's a cool line. But what does it actually mean? Well, first, as you know, it's expensive to be poor. The poor and thus often minorities and underrepresented groups in your communities, those you focus your mission, especially those of you who are CDFI organizations, are focused on serving. As you know, people who are underrepresented in community traditionally tend to be in areas where pollution or even climate change impacts are more likely. You hear the, you're on the wrong side of the tracks. Well, that actually stemmed from where the prevailing winds would blow based on factories. And so if you had money, you didn't live where the factories blew their wind over. But if you didn't have money or representation, then where else could you go? And so thus that stuck around. And that's just one aspect. We don't have qu quite as much of that industry anymore, but we still have the residual impacts of it. As energy costs increase, the people who will most be affected by that, once again, are those who have the smallest buffer, essentially. And we want to make sure that that's addressed as well. So that's a climate change impact that credit unions have a role in assisting. So if people are unable to afford their energy, they're unable to afford upgrading their homes, then credit unions won't be able to continue serving them because they won't be able to afford to be there in those properties. And we wanna make sure that both the collaterals are protected and also the people are protected. Now we know if you have money and resources, you're just gonna go, this area is pretty rough and you're just gonna move somewhere else. Now we understand as credit union people that not everybody has that option. And some people, even if they have the option, they don't want to, they grew up there, this is their community, they have a connection to it much like credit unions. Most, to be honest, not too far. Think about where your credit union is right now. And typically, most institutions think of climate change in terms of their own property and their own services, not necessarily of the members. They think of what's considered scope one, the impacts that you have directly. So if you have a building, you're trying to make it more energy efficient. That's, that's great. If your members have a building, we want to make sure that that's also energy efficient. Do we want to make sure that members have more efficient vehicles? Yes. Do we also then want to make sure that members can potentially live in a community where they may not need to use that vehicle as much? Yes, yes. Clean Energy Credit Union check them out. They are totally focused on this mission, on the mission of the triple bottom line on people, planet, and prosperity. Go check them out. We got our neighbors up north at Van City. It's literally part of their mission. In fact, when they were electing board members, that was part of the campaign, so to speak, on those people. Their descriptions, their bios included how they've helped serve the credit union mission, which is the triple bottom line mission of the community as well. Suncoast Credit Union has made a lot of strides towards, again, that first step. They've installed solar alongside or on a number of their buildings. They've dramatically reduced their energy costs, which obviously allows them to produce additional services for members that they may not have been able to afford previously because they've reduced their uh, overall overhead expenses, which is fantastic. Now, they also offer EV and fuel efficient vehicle loans, which is, again, another way to help incentivize the transition to a more sustainable, low carbon, low emission transportation infrastructure. Credit unions like yours can also be a part of some of these steps. All right, so I sometimes hear from credit unions, well, Okay, but how can climate change, like, affect us? Like, legitimately, okay, so if it rains, it storms, it whatever, but how can climate change affect us, like, in a big picture? And that's a great question, because that's really what it comes down to from a risk standpoint, right? Well, losses tend to increase during severe weather events, and we are seeing more extreme weather occurrences, whether it be heat, 
which is the most deadly form of extreme weather, or floods, or fires, or combinations of all of these things. Plus, we know for a community it's just not good. Nobody wants any of that stuff. But you also have the other financial aspect, which is losses from things like depreciation or abandonment that are now accelerated timeframes, right? Uh, that could be on your own owned infrastructure, or it can be on things that you retain the collateral for, uh, for things that you have loans out for. Basically, imagine a building that was built with the assumption that the depreciation can be calculated over, say, 25 years. Well, now it's in an area where it may not be suitable to be there for more than 15 years. Well, now there's a problem. All the numbers are wrong. And you guys have people who are way smarter about all of that than me. And I'm sure that if you dove into it, you'd be like, ooh, some of these things don't look so great now. Those are ideas that we want to consider as a comprehensive picture of what climate change means for credit unions. Credit unions may have to deal with regulatory impacts, right? There may be a cost of carbon. There may be other impact taxes added in. These are things that are possibilities down the line. We don't know exactly what's going to happen with that, but we know that something is probably going to. And it's better to be thinking ahead of that and having the data already rather than getting caught off guard and trying to catch up to this stuff. So staying current with these potential legislative uh, changes as well as how the potential financial incentives and disincentives may work in the future. So think of it as four steps. First, we're going to start out with thinking of your original business plan. Well, that's, that's your mission. That's going to be serving your members, right? Think about how you considered approaching the community that you're serving. And perhaps it was literally $25 in a lockbox and 30 people got together. But its original motivation was serving that community and helping those people improve their lives, their families' lives, and the area that they were in. That's really what you're doing here. It's just addressing a different set of issues than what we had back when you started. Second, collaboration. You're all about working together. You've got shared branch, shared banking, you share different services, you work with other vendors and suppliers to ensure great products and offerings for your members. So you get collaboration. You even work with other credit unions. You've got your leagues, you interact with other CEOs and CLOs and retail branch managers to make sure that you're doing the best things possible and you're sharing best practices around. Well, that's where collaboration is going to come in here because it is a bigger issue than just one institution. So we need to all work together to come up with strategies that complement each other. Number three, you want to build up from the follower mentality. If you're the leader, then others will follow you. But if somebody else that you've recognized is already a leader, well then, if they're doing good things, there's nothing wrong with you guys being the followers. And that leadership will also encourage your members to do so as well. You'll be supporting more and more levels of change. And that can eventually become systemic change, which, as we know, can solve real problems. Number four. It comes down to a really simple concept of simply helping because it's who you are. Now, of course, I'm gonna use a proverb from the marine world, and it's one about a starfish that you may have heard, but if not, that's okay. Essentially, imagine two people walking along a beach and one person sees a starfish up on the sand. They go, they place it back into the ocean, and they keep walking. The other person looks at them like, what are you doing? There's it's tons of starfish, it's such a big ocean. What, what difference could you possibly make? They said, well, it made a difference for that one starfish. Now, of course, I get it, my marine science friends are all going, Joe, they're sea stars, they're not fish. And I go, 
It was a proverb, and I hope we had a good time. Credit unions get financial literacy. You get the education side. You know it's important. You know it's an essential aspect of what you do. So how does climate change fit in? Well, you can include that in your education efforts. Consider a few approaches. First, you can give education for planning for now more common extreme weather events. Provide that plan, make it ahead of time, share it out with members, include it with newsletters or other content. Show that you're caring for more than just their finances, but their actual lives. And as we know, all of those things overlap. Second, you can consider other products that might make sense for your members in a time of more weather uncertainty and weather extremes. There are programs such as disaster mortgage insurance that could provide additional protections for members beyond their homeowner's insurance and other policies that they may have uh, that may allow them to keep going or to get by a little better in the case of something really awful happening. And we all know when bad things happen, that's when people are at their most vulnerable. That's when communities have the most need for assistance. And if you can be a tool and a provider of some of those strategies and some of those protections, well, that's, that's the mission. There's another way that credit unions can take climate focus right into their core operations. And that's in where you put your funds. Do you loan out to businesses that are going to be causing, amplifying, or potentially receiving impacts of climate change more than others? Essentially, what is the climate risk of your loan collateral? I'm all about great marketing. And you know what? This has those opportunities too. You may think, well, what does climate risk have to do with marketing? And that makes sense. Hear me out. People are looking for businesses that align with their values. And if their financial institution shows that they're looking out for their community and that they're looking out for the greater planet while encouraging the ability for that person and other underrepresented groups to be lifted up together, there's some, there's some branding uh, benefit there. There's, there's definitely a little thing. Now, how does that relate then to HR? From the hiring perspective, you know more than ever, people, especially millennial and younger, are overwhelmingly driven by values. And if they're working for a company that they just don't think aligns with what they believe and what they feel is important in the world, you know, a lot of them are just gonna leave. And you know what? That's that's good, it's pushing for that. If you're out there supporting good policies and supporting good preparation and doing what you can to make an impact on a community and global issue, that's gonna attract some, some people. They're gonna be into that. And you're gonna get people more excited to work with your organization and work with your credit union because they believe in what you're doing. And not only do they believe it, they can help in advancing it. So now they're a part of that, which inclusivity is important and helps drive people and gets people excited about it genuinely, far more than you know casual Fridays or pizza party Tuesdays or something, which um, now that I think about it, we should definitely do pizza party Tuesdays like every Tuesday. You may be wondering, what are some things credit unions like us and our board and our executive team, what can we do right now to start making a difference? Great question. First, we need to acknowledge that climate change is a real threat, but also a real opportunity. Second, we wanna start that internal review of opportunities and risks that you have with your current setup. And that ranges everything from your technology to the tiers of investments that you have, to your business lending, to your real estate properties, to your actual branch locations, going into all of the science 
and flood predictions and weather events and all of that. Just to start, you want to get a basic baseline of where you stand when it comes to climate risk and opportunity. Number three, this one I think is the most important. You want to start education and input from your staff. You want to start listening to what questions they have, but also provide them with education that helps them understand why you're undertaking this effort. Providing some of the greater science, but also how these things are affecting the communities that you serve and where they live and how this can help and make a difference for them, for the members, and for your institution's continued longevity and success. Thanks for bearing with me. And I really hope you got a good background in addition to the report from Finley and Ceres on climate change and its impacts in the financial sector, especially credit unions. There's a ton that we can do together and I am thrilled to work with all of you. Thanks again. I'm Joe, Credit Union Geek, CEO of Green Profit Solutions, and oh yes, lifelong environmentalist. Hold on, I gotta go turn off a light.